Hey everybody, Coder here. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have run into the situation where you want to print some of the cards from the Armada Shipyard site. So I wanted to kind of put together a quick tutorial video of how you can go about doing that. So here I am at the Armada Shipyard site. And let's say I'm in the Rebel Fleet here and I want to print out the BFF1 bulk freighter um, ship cards and ship base cards. So the way that we can do it so that everything will fit correctly in the Printer Studio site, uh, we have to do a little bit of massaging to these images. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to open the actual image in its full size. Uh, you'll know it's full size because it's the only thing you'll see on the page. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click and choose Copy Image to add the image to my clipboard. Now I'm going to switch over to Photoshop and I'm going to create a new file and by default you'll notice that the file is being created at the pixel size of the image that I copied automatically by default. Now the important part here is that you need to change this resolution to be 600 pixels per inch. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and create the image. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste the DA image within this. Uh, notice it fits fully, it's at the exact right size, everything lines up perfectly. Um, now this image is still not ready to print. We need to kind of tweak this a little bit. So one of the things that we can do is I'm going to actually use the DA template here. So if I look at the file that I've already kind of created here, you'll notice I already have a few layers in here. I've already kind of started working on this. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that the image that's on the left hand side at 600 dpi will correctly fit within the template that's provided by Printer Studio at 300 dpi. So one way that we can kind of mass produce these, and I'm just going to do a couple real quick here for you. Uh, so let's say I want to also print this corresponding BFF1A card as well as both of these ship cards. Uh, I'm sorry, ship base cards. So I'm just going to move through three of these images remaining and kind of show you the process. So if I click on this image, notice that nothing is happening. Some of the images here are like this, and a trick that you can do is if you right click and you choose Open Image in New Tab or Copy Image Address, uh, you should be able to get the actual image URL. So I'm going to open this and notice that this image is actually quite smaller than we expect. If you notice in the URL, there's actually a parameter being passed that's telling it what width and height to draw the image at. So in any of these cases where you can't link directly to the image, you can kind of use this workaround. By deleting the size of the image and hitting enter, now we get the full sized image. So again, I'm going to right click, choose copy image switch back over to Photoshop and in my working file at 600 dpi I'm just going to go ahead and paste another image. Notice it created a new layer on top of the original one that I did. So now what I'm going to do is I want to grab both of the ship card images because these kind of are a little bit different. They don't fit exactly within the border, but you have to cut these anyway when you're done. So as long as they fit within the cut area, we should be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click that image. Copy image. Switch back over to my Photoshop file. I'm going to paste it. Same thing with the second image. And notice each time I paste, it's already automatically center aligning for me. Um, just to be sure, I can go back and I can select all uh, layers. Hit Control A to select all. And then I can easily center all the different layers within the image. Okay, so we now have our ship and card images ready to go. But notice, if I try to drag one of these layers into my output file,
Okay, so here we can see our actual layers have been brought in, but notice that they are way too big. They don't fit within our uh, template boundaries. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove those layers that I just brought in. And here's the key. So now back in our original image, um, it doesn't really matter if these items visible or not, but what we want to do is we want to take this image itself after everything is in here. And we want to go image, image size. Now, if we resize this to the correct target of 300 uh, pixels per inch, and we hit OK, we now have images that have been reduced by essentially half their size. So now, if I were to, I'm just going to select my back uh, background layer so it doesn't dump it into one of these layer groups. Um, so what I want to do is with the working file selected, I can shift click the first and last layers to select all of the layers that I want to bring into my output file. Now when I drag these items over to here, notice that they're the correct size. So again, we want to go through this exercise of selecting all of our layers, control A to select all, and now by centering everything within boundaries of the template, notice that I can turn the template guide layer on and off, and this will show us basically where the cut lines are going to be from the factory when they produce the cards for you. Okay, so now that we have our images all prepared and ready to go, I want to hide all of my layers so that my image is blank. Now what I want to do is one at a time, I want to turn on my individual layers, and now with this layer selected, I'm going to hit Control shift s to save. I'm going to give it a meaningful name. This is the BFF1A. So we'll call it BFF1A. And for our image type, we will choose ping. Now when I hit save, we'll be prompted for how we want to set our interlace and compression. I'm just going to hit OK, accepting the defaults. So I now have my BFF1A image. I'm going to hide this layer, turn this layer on. Same thing. This is just going to be called BFF. And again, we're going to choose the ping option. And save. Now, very important, make sure that you have this template layer turned off as well as any of the children within it because this could very quickly create a very bad image that you could accidentally print and be completely useless after you've already paid for it. So I like to just make sure that my entire templ template layer is turned off and I'm going to continue along here and I'm going to export these other couple images. So now we have the BFF1A ship card. What we really want is this kind of white border around here with nothing else visible except for the card that we're actually trying to print. Because when we translate this over to Print Studio, uh, I'm sorry, Printer Studio, uh, this will translate very nicely and you won't have any issues when you go to print. So I'm going to go ahead and do my final image here. Okay, so now we have our images ready to go. So what I want to do is I'm going to now leave Photoshop and I'm going to go to Printer Studio. And I suggest that you create an account and log in prior to doing any of this so that way you can save your project as you go. And what I want to do is I want to click Cards and Games. Under Game Cards, I'm choosing Get Started. And from here, you can pick any of the three templates that you need. For ship and ship card bases, 
you use this tarot size custom cards blank cards layout for upgrade cards you're going to be using this mini size playing cards custom cards and for squadron cards we're looking for the poker size um, I believe it's this one right here personalized large size custom cards now I take that back uh, the link will be below I believe it's this one actually personalized poker custom cards blank cards so what we want to do is let's say we're trying to print the cards that we just created which are both ship and ship based cards so I'm gonna go ahead and click the Tara size custom cards now very important here make sure that under card quality you choose the premium 310 GSM linen option this will create cards that are essentially identical to the default Armada cards. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is we need to choose the size of the deck that we're going to create. So in this case, if this was all that I was printing, I have basically the two ship cards and the two ship card bases that I need to print. So the up to 10 cards deck option will work just fine. Um, if you're printing larger batches, figure out how best to maximize this based on the number of cards you're trying to create. Just keep in mind that for every ship, you typically have at least two cards in the deck that you need to uh, consume. So in this case, I'm just going to go with the simple up to 10 card option. And once we're ready and we've chosen the card quality and size of deck, we're going to click personalize it. Now keep in mind, if you make a mistake and accidentally choose the wrong size of deck, you will not be able to change that later. So make sure you choose the right option here now and plan accordingly. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click personalize. And this will kind of load the printer studio wizard that guides me through the creation of my project. So here we can see the default options that we've already selected. Now what we wanna do is we wanna choose either an image for the same uh, to be shared across all of the cards uh, or you can add your own image if you'd like or another option is that you can print the cards one on each side so for example the BFF1 could be on one side of the card and the BFF1A could be on the other side of the card depending on your preference or if you'd like to cut down your production costs um, in this case, I'm going to walk through that example since I don't have the default image to use as a background. So I'm going to choose the different image options because this will allow me to specify a different image for each card. If you're going to use a default back for all of the cards, then you can just choose this same image option and choose the card back. So in this case, I'll go ahead and choose different images. And the first step is that we need to actually upload our images. So I'm going to click Upload Images. And I'm going to browse to my folder that has the cards that I just created. Here we can see the BFF, BFF1A, uh, both ship and ship base. So I'm going to go ahead and select all four of these. And all I did was I clicked the first one, hold down Shift and click the last one, and hit Open. You'll now see that the images will load. You'll see like one of four, two of four, etc. Now just for simplicity, I'm gonna keep this example simple. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print this ship card on the back of the first card. I'm then gonna print this on the back of the second card. And if we look, we can see this is the BFF1A and this is the BFF1. So what I need to do then is once we populate all of our back images, then we go ahead and we hit next. I'm just hitting okay because that just warned me that I don't have a full deck here, which I'm okay with. Step two is the option to add text to the cards, but since the cards are already created as graphics for us, we don't really need to do that. We're just gonna go ahead and skip this step. Uh, 
Now the next step is this is a very similar window that we saw before. Now this is going to be the image that we want to use for all of the, um, sorry, these are the back sides. We did the fronts already. So I'm going to choose the different images option again. And now I'm going to do upload images. Same thing we did before. Shift click the first and last. That will upload all four of our images. Now we did these first two, so we need to make sure that we have the second two on the backs and we'll verify this before we go ahead and print. So I will add my ship card as the back for this card. And I will add my um, my actual ship card. I'm sorry, the first one was the ship base. This is the ship card. So again, we should have this corresponding to, and the other one we have the BFF1. This is the BFF1A. On the front side, we have the BFF1 ship card. And we need to make sure that we have both when we create our project here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit next and this will give us the option to again add text to the back sides but again since the images already contain everything that we need we're not going to go ahead and put anything on there so we're just going to go ahead and skip this this will be the step that's most important here we're going to verify that all of our images are correct and match one another so in this case I can just simply click this to get the preview image and I can see that this is the BFF1 so I want to make sure that the corresponding back should be the BFF1A, which it is. Same thing here. On one side, we have the BFF1A. And on the other side, we have the BFF1. Okay, so our project looks good. Um, everything here looks ready to go. Um, notice that our images fit nice and cleanly within the boundaries of the preview. Uh, when we're ready, we have to click this, yes, all of these images, etc., are essentially not protected by copyright. And what I would suggest is clicking Add to Saved Projects. If you just click Add to Cart, you might not be able to recover it and continue working on it. So this is really a good way to kind of hit the Save button, so to speak. Now, once you're in here, you'll see your project listed. At any point, you can go back to Edit. We can make any changes that we want. We're already on the preview panel. So we can go ahead and hit add to cart. And that's it. So once the item's in our cart and it's prepped and ready to go, all we need to do is finish our checkout and pay. And in a couple weeks, you'll get your cards. So I hope this has been helpful uh, to anyone kind of confused by this process. Uh, I know it's been an ongoing issue for a while. People have had concerns and questions about how to do this. So hopefully this makes everything nice and clean and easy to understand for you and you can benefit from it. Uh, once again, this is Coder from Amoeba Games. I uh, hope to see you guys on the site. Thanks a lot.